Hello viewers, a warm welcome to the e-learning platform of Durham College. Myself, Julie Buiragi, an assistant professor of the Department of Geology, Durham College. I am going to deliver a lecture on the topic menstrual cycle, which is covered in the paper ZU AC3026 of BSc third semester and ZU3034 of MSc third semester. Let us come to the introduction part of the topic. The continuity of races of any species depends upon the reproductive system. The female reproductive system is one of the most vital parts of the human reproductive process as it brings a new life to the world. It consists of the ovaries, oviduct, uterus, vagina and the external genitalia. The reproductive cycle that occurs in the female primates is known as the menstrual cycle. And in the human females, the phase of menstruation is repeated at an interval of about 28-29 days and the cycle of events starting from one menstruation to the next one is called the menstrual cycle. At the midpoint of each cycle, one ovum is released. The average duration of the cycle is 28 days. However, the duration may be as short as 20 days or may be as long as 45 days. Mostly, any abnormality of the cycle length is associated with decreased fertility. The first menstruation that occurs at puberty is known as manner. The cessation of menstruation is called menopause that occurs at around 50 years of age. Cyclic menstruation phases extending between manner and menopause is an indicator of normal reproductive phase. Now let us know about the significance of the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle allows the growth of a single fetus at a time by releasing usually only one ovum per cycle. It prepares the uterine endometrium for the implantation process of the blastocyst. Both ovarian and uterine events take place during each menstrual cycle. Ovarian events consist of follicular and luteal phases. Uterine events have both proliferative and secretory phases. Let us discuss about menstruation now. The occurrence of menstruation indicates the beginning of menstrual cycle. If the ovum ovulated in the previous cycle is not fertilized, then only menstruation occurs. The menstrual flow lasts for three to five days. However, it may vary from person to person. The flow occurs because of the endometrial lining breakdown. On average, 30 ml of blood is lost per cycle. During pregnancy, menstruation does not occur. Lack of menstruation may also occur because of stress, poor health, PCOS, etc. Now, let us study about the ovarian cycle. This diagram shows the normal ovary with follicles of different stages of development. At birth in the female child, each ovum is surrounded by a single layer of granulosa cells. The ovum with this granulosa cell sheet is called primordial follicle. The granulosa cells secrete an oocyte maturation inhibiting factor that keeps the ovum suspended in its primordial state in the childhood. After puberty, the enter ovaries along with some of the follicles within them begin to grow. The first stage of follicular growth is the moderate enlargement of the ovum itself. This follows growth of additional layers of granulosa cells in the follicles. These follicles are known as primary follicles. 
there is growth of 6 to 12 primary follicles each month. The initial effect is rapid proliferation of the granulosa cells, giving rise to many more layers of these. In addition, spindle cells derived from the ovary interstitium collect in several layers outside the granulosa cells, giving rise to a second mass of cells called theca. This layer is divided into theca interna and theca externa. The mass of granulosa cells secretes a follicular fluid that contains a high concentration of estrogen. Accumulation of this fluid causes an entram to appear within the mass of granulosa cell. Then, accelerated growth leads to the formation of larger follicles called vesicular follicles. After a week or more of growth, but before ovulation, one of the follicles outgrow all the other. The remaining 5 to 11 developing follicles involute and these follicles are said to be become atreti. The single follicle reaches a diameter of 1 to 1.5 cm at the time of ovulation is called the graphian follicle. After ovulation, the remaining granulosa and theca internal cells change rapidly into lutein cells. They enlarge in diameter two or more times and become filled with lipid inclusion that give them yellowish appearance. This process is called luteinization and the total mass of cells together is called corpus luteum. Corpus luteum secretes both estrogen and progesterone but progesterone secretion is more. After 7 to 8 days of ovulation, corpus luteum involutes, loses its secretory function and yellowish color and become corpus albicans. During ensuing few weeks, it is replaced by connective tissue and absorbed over months. In the previous slide, I have already mentioned about ovulation. Now let us know what is ovulation. This picture shows a graphian follicle undergoing ovulation process. Ovulation in a woman with normal 28 days of sexual cycle occurs 14 days after the onset of menstruation. Shortly before ovulation, the protruding outer wall of the follicle swells rapidly and a small area in the center of the follicular capsule called the stigma protrudes like a nipple. In another 30 minutes or so, fluid begins to ooze from the follicle through the stigma and about 2 minutes later, the stigma ruptures widely allowing a more viscous fluid which has occupied the central portion of the follicle to evade in it outward. This viscous fluid carries with it the ovum surrounded by a mass of several thousand granulosa cells called corona radiata. Another event of the menstrual cycle is the uterine cycle. The uterine events of menstrual cycle can be divided into proliferative, secretory and menstrual phases. After menstruation, only a thin layer of endometrial stroma remains. Then, the endometrial layer grows in thickness and till the time of ovulation, it is 3 to 5 mm thick. At the peak of the secretory phase, endometrium has a thickness of 5 to 6 mm. The secretory phase lasts for about 12 days and then it is followed by menstruation, where there is a breakdown of the endometrial layer along with the blood vessels. Dear students, now let us know about the hormones associated with the menstrual cycle. The hormones are GnRH or gonadotropin releasing hormone, FSH or follicle stimulating hormone, LH or luteinizing hormone, estrogen and progesterone. The gonadotropin-releasing hormone is secreted by the hypothalamus 
in short pulses averaging once every 90 minutes. The anterior pituitary sex hormones, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone are secreted in response to the releasing hormone GnRH from the hypothalamus. The ovaries secrete estrogen and progesterone in response to the two female sex hormones from the anterior pituitary, that is follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. During each month of the female sexual cycle, there is a cyclic increase and decrease of the female sexual hormones. The level of estrogen in blood gradually increases in the follicular phase. There is a drop of estrogen level during ovulation and again there is a slight increase in the luteal phase. Again, as we can see in the graph, the progesterone level is lower in the follicular phase but it increases abruptly in the luteal phase for the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone level. The peak occurs just before ovulation. The last part of today's lecture is menstrual disorders. The first disorder is dysmenorrhea. It is the medical term for painful menstrual periods characterized by cramps and pelvic pain. The second one is amenorrhea which is the absence of menstruation often defined as missing one or more menstrual periods. The third one is oligomenorrhea. It is defined as irregular and inconsistent menstrual flow in a woman. Next, some women have menstrual bleeding that is heavy or lasts for more than a few days. This condition is known as menorrhagia. And the last one is premenstrual syndrome or PMS. It is the changes in mood, emotions, physical health and behavior that can occur between ovulation and the start of period. And these are the references with the help of which I have prepared the lecture. With this, I want to conclude my lecture. Thank you.